Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Someone had written to me and asked me to, to perhaps do a video to speak about the fires in California, and so the, 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 that is in part what I'm going to address in this video. I am not only going to address the fires, however, I'm going to address many cataclysms that are occurring in the earth right now, um, be it earthquakes or floods, tsunamis, droughts, the beginning of famine, uh, earth changes where there are sinkholes and cracks opening up, volcanic activity and, of course, the fires. And the reason why I'm going to cover all these things is that it's kind of the same topic. So I want to open this discussion by saying that I don't take any pleasure in people being harmed and in, in them losing their homes and them losing their, their well-being in any way, being injured or even being killed. I take no pleasure in that. But that said, we as Christians need to understand the righteousness of God and what's happening here. And the, the thing is, is that there are many people who are, are saying that this is the power of the enemy coming against people and attacking righteous people. And what I would say to that is that whether or not the enemy is involved, nothing happens unless God allows it. So there are people who say that the fires are a result of something like a directed energy weapon or harp or, or various technologies that the enemy is using in order to bring forward the globalist agenda to move people uh, into the cities and away from their homes to to take their property from them. And this may very well be the case, and I, I'm not saying that it isn't. But what I would add to that is that the enemy does not get to do anything to anyone unless God allows it. And I, so I want to examine God allowing this throughout the world and particularly in the United States. I, I live in the United States and, and I, I can say some things about the United States because I live here and, and so I'm not an outsider criticizing the American people. I'm one of the American people and what I see is rampant sin and people who are using the idea of getting a lot of people saved and into the churches. They're using a concept where it, whereby they don't say anything about people's sins and they are bringing sin into the churches. So one way that this manifests, of course, the most obvious way that most people can understand is the use of rainbow flags on churches and, and making it seem that that who are we to judge how somebody loves someone else and that it's okay with God if someone practices homosexuality. And, and that's one example, but there are many examples of hypocrisy and sin in the churches, such as people twisting the scripture to say that it's okay for a woman to remarry when her husband is still alive. And this is clearly against the scripture and it's adultery. And I'm not going to talk about that doctrine in particular here. I'm just going to mention that, that the scripture forbids a woman to remarry as long as her husband lives. This is written in the Bible. If you want more on that topic, please email me and I'll be happy to help you. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to name some of the rampant sins that occur in God's people in, in the, the churches. Where, where the scripture clearly commands that women are not to teach in the churches and that they're to cover their heads when they pray or prophesy. 
we have women exalting themselves as pastors and teachers and apostles. And not only are they doing that, but, but they're doing it with their heads uncovered, all decked out in fancy jewelry, wearing men's clothing. And the scripture says that this is disobedient, and when women wear things that pertain to a man, it's abomination. And again, I have other videos about this topic. Also, in the churches, there is the widespread deception of worshiping Babylonian gods in the churches. So, celebrating the festivals of Rome, such as the Christ Mass and the Ishtar Festival. So, Christmas and Easter, to name two, and there's other ones, where people are partaking of the pagan idolatry of Rome, of ancient Rome. And they do so being misled, of course, and, and so I, I'm not saying this to condemn people, but rather to get them to question what they're doing, because Jesus never told us to celebrate his birthday. His birthday was not in December. That's the birthday of Tammuz. December 25th was the birthday of Tammuz, the reincarnated sun god, the, the god child of Semiramis, the moon goddess of ancient, the ancient Canaanite religion. So Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz is what is now manifesting in the modern day trinity. And people who believe the trinity have constructed for themselves another Jesus, which is not the Jesus of the Bible. They also are um, calling themselves Christian and wanting things like wealth, political power, world power, and they want to to rise to global world power under a uh, religious system known as ecumenicalism or ecumenism and and also dominionism, where they, they think that they, they need to set up the kingdom of God on earth and then Jesus Christ will arrive to assume the throne. And that is actually the Antichrist who will do that. And it's the Antichrist system that seeks to have uh, political power. And this, of course, is Rome regaining her state authority. And when she does this, she, she lies to people and says things like, you know, that, that just because she has blood on her hands, Christian blood on her hands, where she, the Roman church massacred Christians who, who did not agree with her Babylonian gods and her Babylonian practices. And she massacred and crucified and tortured to death and burned to death people who believed in God's word and, and stood against her apostasy. That the Roman church says, oh, well, that was then, and, and they tell a lot of lies about it. It wasn't then. It's continued ever since then in other places. And the Roman Catholic Church, for example, uh, has had associations with various fascist regimes, regimes such as the Nazis, and uh, was very closely allied with the Nazis and what happened in Germany in World War II with the extermination of the Jewish people and other people. So the, the Roman Catholic Church has a history, a bloody history, and she is lying to people and telling them that this is all about inclusion and love and let's all get along and it really doesn't matter how you find God and we can baptize aliens and, and your experience of God is just as valid as mine and I believe in the baby Jesus and, and you believe in, in love too so let's all just hold hands and sing Kumbaya and, and this is a deception to get people to accept the global one world religion ruling over the entire earth. And when the Roman church comes into power, she will kill anyone who doesn't agree with her. And this is in the scripture. So very briefly, I will show you where it says that in Revelation chapter 13. And, and we will just give me a minute to find this because I, in, in verse 15, so in Revelation 13, verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast 
should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calleth, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. He that hath understanding, let him count the number of the beast. And I, I'm going to uh, pause here and just say that that the technology that we now have, which is fallen angel technology, where there's a, a web that has been cast over the entire earth, that now we have the technology where this control system can exist. Not only that, this AI that surveils everyone, that knows what everyone is saying and doing, is rapidly gaining complete and total power over the entire earth, and there will be no place to hide. And when this, this global religion takes control of the world system, and the Pope is at the top of it, the Pope is at the top of it, that then Antichrist will come to rule over this, this state religious unity that has been formed. This is the second beast of Revelation that causes everyone to worship the first beast. And the first beast is the Antichrist system of Rome. And of course it existed before that. It existed in ancient Samaria and ancient Egypt and throughout the world. And the Trinity is a big part of that. Anyone who abstains from that will be killed. So the reason I'm talking about this, and I, I'm, I have other videos on this topic, so um, if you want more on that, I, I will send you more if you just tell me what it is that you're asking so I can be sure to answer your question. The truth of the matter is that when we're seeing these changes in the earth where the earth is reacting, it, it may be because of what the enemy is doing. The enemy does nothing unless God allows it. So let's go first to the book of Leviticus. Well, actually, second. But uh, I hadn't planned on reading from Revelation there. So in Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 20, we can read a little bit about what's happening. Pardon me, verse 28. Well, we'll start with verse um, 26. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. So this is about God commanding his people to obey his commandments and not to partake of the abominations of the heathen. But one thing we can understand from what I just described is that in the United States of America, we have abominations in God's churches. And people think that they are following Jesus Christ, and they are not. So this is an abomination before God. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew, spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. In verse 29, For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abomination, abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord thy God. Well, um, if you read the entirety of Levit Leviticus 18, you can see that it is about sexual sin. So it's about things like incest. It's about things like um, adultery, things like fornication, things like sacrificing children to Moloch, which we refer, of course, in modern times to abortion. Um, 
and then it says in verse 21, Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So profaning the name of God, of course, would be to apply the name of Jesus Christ to a Babylonian deity otherwise known as Tammuz, the reincarnated sun god. So that is profaning the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Father's name also is Jesus Christ. Jesus inherited his Father's name. And that is also written in Scripture. But I'm not, again, if you want anything more about what I'm saying, here I can send you more. But for the purposes of this video, I want to be clear what the sin is, the abominations are. And then we read in verse 23, 22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to do not defile thou, thyself therewith. And um, so these are the kinds of things that, that are referred to here. And we can see that these things are present not only throughout the world, but in God's house, amongst the people who call themselves Christians. So for this reason, the land is defiled and will spew out these people because they have committed abomination. Now, I, I don't take any pleasure in pointing this out. Let's go now to Deuteronomy chapter 9. As a matter of fact, the reason I point it out is so that people might come to repentance and, and turn from this wickedness and turn to the true Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and be baptized in his name for the remission of their sins so that they are able to overcome their sin and live a holy life. So in Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 8, um, we read, well, let's start in verse 7, Remember and forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that ye didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. You see, when people worship other gods and call them by the name Lord Jesus Christ, this provokes God to wrath. And that is why things are happening to, to get people to wake up and to see that judgment is coming, that God is not going to just allow this to go on and on and on forever, that people are accountable before God. God is a, a God of love, but he is a God of judgment as well. And the two cannot exist without each other. That perfect love also includes judgment. The reason for this is, is anyone who's been a victim of abuse knows that when someone does you harm and, and commits a crime against you, that Anyone who, who wants to speak of that as if that was a nice person and they didn't really do anything to you doesn't love you. And God is a holy God. And he is making a way, he has made a way, for people to be have their sins remitted and live in holiness. And when people not only refuse that way, so they refuse to be baptized in Jesus' name, for their remission of their sins. They also are worshiping false gods and causing, ca calling these other gods for, for worship, worshiping other gods. They're worshiping in a way that is abomination and, and very displeasing to God. So this stirs up his wrath. And let's go now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and we'll read verses 8 through 10. So, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not, whoops, pardon me, I have the wrong place here. I think it must be 2 Thessalonians. Yes, my apologies. Um, so, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. And, well, we'll start with verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, 
when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You know, God was so loving and good to make the world the way he did, to know that mankind would sin and to plan that his son would be born at a certain time to take the place of Adam and that anyone who believed and obeyed his gospel might have eternal life. That God was so loving to make this, the world this way. He made it so we have a choice because he didn't want a bunch of robots to serve him. What he wanted was people who freely chose to, to do what he commanded. So the commandments of God are not grievous. It's not grievous. For, as a matter of fact, it causes um, people to not cause harm when they obey God's law. So we can all agree that God's law that says thou shalt not kill is a good law. But thou shalt not kill means exactly that. It means thou shalt not kill. That includes things like abortion, and that includes things like hating people, as Jesus Christ said. He, he said that if you hate your brother without a cause, it's the same as killing them. So there are many kinds of killing that are forbidden to God's people. And when we obey the scripture, it not only... It, it, it's not grievous because it keeps us from harming other people and it keeps us from defiling ourselves. So the way a person becomes a Christian is to read his God's word and follow God's word and do what it says. So when people disobey this, when they refuse to obey this, when they want to continue in their sin, where they want the wealth of this world, the power of this world. And they want to do things like engage in pedophilia, which is, of course, rampant in the Catholic Church and, and sometimes also in the Protestant Church. They want to engage in pedophilia and adultery. They want to engage in fornication. The women are dressed as men and the men is dressed, are dressed as women. People are changing their sex. People are disobedient to God on basically every single thing that God ever commanded, including bowing down before idols and worshiping other gods, taking his name in vain. So the reason why these things are happening is to bring people, to wake people up and get them to see that they need to repent and turn back to the old paths. The old path says written in the Holy Scripture. To obey the gospel as the apostles taught, not as some theologian came up with 150 years ago. To, you know, to, to pervert the word of God, to trick you into thinking that all you need to believe, it, all you need to do is believe. You don't have to obey anything. That God just knows you're a sinner and he doesn't expect you to be holy. And this is not what scripture says. Jesus said, be therefore holy, even as your Father in heaven is holy. Would Jesus have said that if it wasn't something he expected? If it wasn't something that we could, in fact, do? The truth of the matter is that most people have been deceived, and they, they're believing in another Jesus, a false gospel, and they're worshiping pagan gods. They're engaged in rampant rebellion and sin, and they are calling themselves while doing all this by the name of the Lord. For that reason, they have stored up for themselves wrath. Now, finally, I want to make a point about survival. Okay, So there are many people these days who want to survive at the end times. And they're looking to preserve their flesh and, and not thinking at all about their eternal life. So I want to read a couple scriptures for you about that. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. I'm not going to read all of this because it's lengthy and I don't want to make the video too long. But here Jesus Christ is about talking about seeking after things like food and clothing and shelter. He's talking about how the Gentiles seek after these things and how Christians should live. 
So let's go uh, to verse 31 of Matthew chapter 6 and begin there. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take, pardon me, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So those, of course, in the apostate churches, and some who are not, of course, just some regular people who are not in the faith at all, know nothing of Jesus Christ, think that they are preparing to, to um, do battle in the end times by arming themselves, storing up food and water. And they talk about, you know, shooting people who might come after their food or attack their family. And this is very grievous because a Christian doesn't kill anybody. When Jesus was arrested, he had the power to not be arrested and go to the cross. But he willingly went to the cross. And this is the case with many Christians. We don't defend ourselves with weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We are told to follow Jesus Christ in everything. And when he went to the cross, he prayed that the Father not lay it to their charge, what they were doing to him. He said, they know not what they do. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And we are not above the master, and we are to do the same thing. So we don't seek to preserve our own life. Rather, we rely on God for provision. This doesn't mean that we don't do what's necessary to make sure that there's adequate food and clothing for our families. But it does mean that we don't put our faith in these things. Let's go now to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 39. And um, we read, and this is again the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Christians don't live for the things of this world. Our treasure is in heaven. We belong to another kingdom, and it's not the kingdom of the globalists. It's the kingdom of God. And we don't establish that kingdom. We, we, we wait for him to come and for Jesus Christ to come and establish his kingdom. And Satan, of course, has turned everything upside down because people don't read the scripture. They don't even know it. So when we want to, to uh, prepare for the end times, it's not about storing up rice and beans or guns or water, or, or, or any such thing. It's about seeking the kingdom of God first, and knowing that this life, this life is passing away, this world is passing away, and Christians know that their treasure is in heaven. So, let's go now to the book of Genesis, chapter 18. So, Genesis 18, and we'll read verses 23 through 25. Here we read um, a conversation that Abraham was having with God about Sodom. And, and we'll start in verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there, were, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from me to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from me. Shall not, shall not the judge of all the earth do right is still in Sodom. And he, he doesn't want Lot and his family to be destroyed. And, and of course, God is righteous, and he will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. But that isn't talking about our flesh. That's talking about our eternal life. Let's read about 
So let's turn to the book of Colossians and, and uh, start with verse 1 of chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When a person becomes a Christian, when they're baptized into Christ, their old man, they have put to death their old man. When they come up out of the water, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, so they have the power of God to live in righteousness. And this, of course, means that daily they crucify their flesh and follow Jesus. Jesus said, He that taketh up not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. This means that every single day, rather than choose our own fleshly desires, that we serve the kingdom. And thereby we lay up our treasure in heaven where our eternal life is hid with Christ and God. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Finally, let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91 doesn't apply to people who are living in disobedience and sin, who are worshiping other gods, and at the same time calling themselves God's people. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. God's wrath is stored up for them unless they repent. So, But Psalm 91 is for God's people. So let's read here in verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. So uh, this whole psalm is very beautiful and very comforting for God's people. God's wrath is not stored up for those who have obeyed His gospel and seeking to do His will every day that they live thereafter. And it's not even for people who stumble occasionally and give in to their flesh and commit a sin. Rather, it's for the rebellious, those who refuse to, to obey God's word, refuse to accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and instead superimpose Babylonian gods onto names that come from the scripture and then bow down before these idols, seeking wealth and power and fame, and they're actually serving an evil that, that was prophesied in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, speaks about this global power, and it's happening now. So, yes, there is technology that can cause fires. Yes, there is technology that can cause severe weather and earthquakes. But again, God is allowing this in order that people, when they're suffering these things, might repent and turn to him. The time is short, and I know this is a hard message because many of you have been harmed by these things. And in your pride, you think that I'm saying something like it's a good thing that you're suffering. And, and believe me, I'm not. What I'm saying, though, is that, that the things of this world are not important to God. What's important to him is your eternal life, your soul. And he allows bad things to happen to people so that they can repent, so that they will repent and turn to him. We can read of this in, I know I said I was going to stop, but let's go to Revelation and read of this. And I believe it is uh, Revelation 3. And we'll start with verse 19. As many as I love, this is Jesus Christ speaking to the Laodicean church. And that's the church that is present now, the lukewarm church. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So we do know that a loving parent rebukes and chasten us, chastens us when we are doing something that will ultimately bring us harm or death. And the Lord Jesus is no different. He rebukes and chastens those that he loves. And that's why these things are happening. 
In verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. My prayer is that there might be a few of you who hear this and are convicted in your heart. If you are, please contact me. If you are unsure of whether or not you are saved, I would be happy to help you understand these principles according to what the Holy Bible says. And, and, and also, I would be happy to assist you if you come to an understanding of how to be saved in finding Christian baptism so that your sins can be remitted. You can receive the power of God in your life, the Holy Spirit of God in your life, so that you have the power to be an overcomer. My prayer is that, that there are still some left in the apostate churches who are able to come out, who are willing to come out. This false church has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. She is filthy. She is full of abominations and wickedness, and it is time to come out of her. The scripture says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her plagues. If people want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, it is not to be partaking of the evils of Babylon. Rather, the way that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High is to be obedient to his word, to do what he says. So again, I remain here for all of you. Feel free to email me or to comment in the comment section below. But bear in mind that the comment section is not for people who want to say that God's word doesn't say what it says or, or that um, to, to um, revile me or any of the people that are associated with this channel. It's for sincere comments and, and sincere questions. And if you have a question or if you disagree sincerely, and you're looking for me to answer that disagreement, that, then that is welcome. But people who want to argue and contend and call names and slander and so forth, th those kind of comments will not be posted. All right then, feel, feel free to contact me and know that every single one of you remains in my prayers. May the word of God both go forth and draw many people into eternal life while there's yet a few moments left.